السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, I wish you happiness at every hour, every minute, every day, every week, every month, every season, every year. That Allah grant you life on this earth before we meet Him, inshallah, in the life to come. I was in Azerbaijan last week, if you have been following what uh, the visit there, but I will talk about Azerbaijan another time, maybe in a week or two. When I come back from my journey next week, inshallah. Today we are going to talk about the poor people are not Ramadan events or seasonal emergency. Why I have chosen this title? Because this was an idea, idea given to be given to me by the gentleman here. His name is Murad Abu Shawish from Gaza, from a Riyadh charity organization in Gaza. This is him. He is the project manager of, or the, or the program manager of a Riyadh charity organization in Gaza, Palestine. This was his statement to me. Poor people are not seasonal, plant, seasonal plants, appear only in Ramadan. Are sleeping polar bears who wake up in the spring only. Neither. And I thank Murad Abu Shawish for inspiring me and letting me and my colleague to be able to deliver his vision about the poor people. We we'll have to thank again my colleague like uh, Ahmed al Sheikh who contributed a lot to it. Maher Sayyid and uh, Abdurrahman in Nahas for making it to come to be seen what we are talking about today. This is the image I wrote, sorry, not I draw, I draw about us when we are rich. This gentleman with the canary face, with the glasses, with the pipe, with the ball tie with a very flashy dress, who is a rich man. He's trying to, he's trying to take a, a, a photograph with those poor people, just for the sake of taking the photograph. And this against our philosophy and against our teaching and our moral values. And bringing people around him for the sake of the photograph only. Okay? That's why I'm saying, or Ahmad, or, or Murad Abu Shawish, is saying poor people are not seasonal plants, appear only in Ramadan, or sleeping polar bears wake up in spring. They are not. Why I'm highlighting uh, Murad Abu Shawish? Because don't ever and never in your life undermine the people who are living under siege in Africa, in Asia, in Yemen, Pakistan, in Afghanistan in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in Liberia, in Sierra Leone, in Mali, in Chad, in Niger, in Malawi, in Syria. Those people like Murad Abu Shawish are very talented, very well educated, very well inspired and dedicated to the cause that they are trying to address and they are equal to us. I was in Azerbaijan last week. You know, the only difference between us and them that they don't speak English. But they are highly talented people. If such women and men and young men and women speak English, they will be ahead of us here in UK and in Europe and in America. Thank you, Brad, for inspiring us. So the introduction for poverty, I'll just go through some of the definitions and then conclude at the end with how to fight poverty. Poverty is inability. Poverty is inability. If Allah gives us the health, if Allah gives us the mind, the sound mind, and give us everything, we should not be disabled by poverty and we should not become poor. 
Government is an uh, sorry. Poverty is our inability to secure the basic needs because we are become difficult to think, difficult to reflect, difficult to develop. Poverty is an ability to secure the basic needs of life for life. No one will know how such suffering, huh? apart from those who are suffering from it. Those group of people are mostly neglected by society and considered non-existent, the poor people, and being humiliated by others because, because of their weaknesses, they became voiceless and no one support them. This is in the introduction about poverty. Many societies and governments create poverty and create the causes of poverty and social problems to make the gap between the rich and poor and keep the, 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 the most of the population actually is busy looking for their uh, livelihood. What are the causes of poverty? If we look at it, what are the causes? Many causes of poverty. First is no jobs. Lack of job opportunity, rise of Rise of the number of one parent family or the family has no breadwinner in the country. Lack of comprehensive economic state plans to deal with this problem. Declining economy of the country. Rise of the level of corruption. You find the wealth of the country will lie in the hand of a few, maybe over in the hand of a family, few families political party, or individuals. This is what we call corruption. People themselves accept that they are poor and they are happy with this. Number seven, there is no jobs in the local market. Rises, raising the prices of commodities, lack of job opportunity, special category of professionals, when, they, when the market does not match the education, they educate you something in the university or in the school which does not fit the local market. Poor governance and poor government support to social services, education, health, transport, and social welfare. And this will force the, the breadwinner in the family to spend his or her income on these social services. Is very interesting point mentioned by Maher Said, who want to be like uh, Mustafa Al-Aqad. He said the rise of thinking poor philosophy. What do you mean thinking poor philosophy? I'm thinking I'm poor. That's it. Finished. Don't tell me how. First of all, those people who think poor that they are poor believe that saving is better than increasing your income. I'm happy with what I have. But let me do saving every month. But with the inflation, your saving will be decreasing in value and quality. Happy to have a job and fixed income. That's it. Don't want to make any change. Happy to maintain their bureaucratic lifestyle. We don't want to change. Do everything according to a certain routine. Don't want to make any risk. Take any risk. Believe that it's impossible to change my social life, social condition. It's impossible. Nothing in this life called impossible. Impossible is what we think that's impossible. And don't want to take any risk. Those people who think poor, they are the thinking, thinking poor philosophy. What was said about poverty by, by scholars and uh, renowned uh, individuals such as Gandhi, what Gandhi said, Gandhi said poverty is the worst case of violence. Everybody knows Gandhi. And Mother Teresa said the worst case of poverty is when you feel lonely and no one is willing to be friendly with you. 
plateau, which we call it Aflatun in Arabic. He said, the societies that have no poor or no rich enjoying the most noble principles in life. Because everyone, everyone will be equal. And Marcus Aurelius said, poverty is the mother of crime. And Aksam bin, Sa bin, Sa bin Safi at Tamim <coughs> said, inability is the key of poverty. Inability. And if you believe that you are unable to make that change, you become poor. If you believe that you are unable to take a risk, that you become poor. Perflot, Prashat, said poverty makes you sad, but at the same time, make you wise. Sayyidina Ali, may Allah be pleased with him. He said, chastity is the adornment of poverty, while thankfulness is the adornment of richness. Very wise people, all of them, Muslims and non-Muslims. This is how I responded to Murad Abu Shawish in my own writing, saying poor people are not, are not, are not, are not a flower that we enjoy its fragrance, then throw it in the garbage. Are not a flower to decorate our outfits with. Are not a delicious and tasty meal. Are not an amusing, strange, fictional story to please the audience. Are not adventure of St. Bad. Adventures or the 1000 Nights stories. Are not one of the seven wonders of this world. Poor people are not those. People are not, poor people are not a dress to wear. Her style we have, fragrance to spray, our new look to show to others. They're not songs or poems we sing and recite in fundraising events. They're not numbers, they're not initiatives or opportunity to elevate our social status in our society. They're not a business to measure by loss and gain. They're not commodities to sell and buy and make profits. To do what? To sustain the stability and sustainability of our organization. They are not a momentary emotional reaction that we forget when leaving the room. Soon we leave the room and forget about it. They're not strangers, marginalized, and forgotten people. When we mention to us, when mention to us, will show our sympathies. But when we leave them, we'll forget about them. They're not beggars, beneficiaries, or breathless people who follow us for our help and mercy. No way. They're not the weak, the ignorant, the low-ranked, the homeless, the lawless, the bad manner, the, who having no values for life, faithless and outlawed. They are not. They are not, they are not. They're not stupid, idiots, senseless, crazy, out of mind, who lost their integrity and credibility. They are not. They're not criminals, suspects, accused, and always followed for any wrongdoing we did. They're not heavy, they are not heavy burden on the societies, on the government, and on our budget. They are not source of radicalism, extremism, terrorism, or threats for our crimes, or the theaters for our crimes. They are not cancer, disease, germs, virus, problem, sickness, disaster, or health that prevent society from development. They are not. You know why? Because Prophet Sallallahu said, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Poor people are the first to enter heaven. This is the fadl al the bounty of the poor on us. This is mentioned in Imam Ahmad book. He said also, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the poor people will enter heaven 500 years before the rich ones. Imam Tirmizi, 
as well. He said, Imam al-Bukhari, Prophet said, Al-Fuqara, Aksar, Ahl Jannah. The poor people are most of people who make the population of heaven. And Prophet said, the majority of the people who followed prophets and messengers are the poor ones. If we mention Sumayya, Radiallahu Khabbab, Ammar, Yasir, Radiallahu Bilal, Radiallahu Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and others, who are the poor people who stood like a rock behind and for Islam. Behind the Prophet and for Islam from day one. So don't ever think what I said about the poor people and how people are thinking about them. In my view, who are they then? They are our partners in society. We build it. They are souls, bodies, feeling, emotions and dreams. Human being, the son of Adam and the daughters of Adam. They are hopes. They have hopes, vision, experience and initiatives. They have culture. They have history. They have faith. They have value. They have ideas, they have energies, they have innovation. They are pioneering. They have theories and they can make theories. They have energies, innovation. They have respect the laws and they have duties to perform. They are for us means for life to build our society and paths and solution for our problem. They are powers. Positive power, their attraction to us, their advancement of the society. They are love, sincerity, giving, and growth. These are the poor people. The positive, that's why the Prophet said, Allah mahshur me for Zumar Matin. Oh Allah, make me among the miskeen. They are sacrifices, they sacrifice their life and their effort. They are efforts we can, we can utilize. They are support to us. They are a part of our building structure which include every one of us in the society. They show humility, forgiveness, complementarity, and testing us with their patience. They are the face of generosity, preferring us to them. Shithar, open-handedness, and ease, ease, ease when they make a dua for us. They are our wish, pride, glory, and hotness, hotness, hotness. They are arts, because some of them are very professional. Arts, drama, history, and noble ones. They are gaining, they are our honor, they are our nobility. They are our process of decision making. Value, aim, inner self, and happiness. All this will lead us to relate ourselves to the poor people. And this is actually the definition, who are they? They are our kinship, the nearest to us. They are our mercy, they are our praising, they are undoubted. They are our determination, struggling, and protection. Cognition, presence, relationship, and grace. We have to be very honored to relate ourselves to them. They are our origins and treasure, our bounty and existence as well. They are our fame, justice. They are elevated, an elevated lofty tower in heaven. Prevention. Protection, prevent sickness to us, protect us, and they are the, if we help them, who are walking on the prophets and messengers' way to heaven. They are compassion, mercy, and distance from heaven. They are mean, aim, objective, and purification. They are land and plantation, and harvest for whom? For pious people. You have to understand the metaphor of the Arabic language to follow me. And this is a challenge. Arabic language is the richest ever on earth. Richest ever for, on earth. And I'm transferring from English, Arabic to English. They are industry. They are workers. They are the factory of the honest people. They are elevation, elevating us. They are eminence and the augustness, augustness to the magnificent ones. Development, growth, fruition of the intellectuals. They are. All these are the poor people. All of them. They are information, science, knowledge, scholars and uh, scholars and encyclopedia. They are need, value, distant destiny, 
of the brilliant people. They are travelers, wanderers, and the desert ships. They are reassurance, jealousy, and secret behind satisfying others. They are based on pinnacle and the shelter for dignitaries. Their glories, civilization, heritage of martyrdom. Their preachment, a domination, and the talk of intimate friends. Those are the poor people. Those are the poor people, no doubt. Never ever try to humiliate them or try to look down at them. How to fight poverty? Respect the poor people, <coughs> value their work, and make them partner to you. Training, capacity building, empowerment of the poor people to discover their talents and the future leaders amongst them. Involving them in project discussion, planning, designing, implementation, review, evaluation, and ownership of the project itself. Representing them, themselves, not us, and regional and global meetings and advocating for their problem. They advocate for them and we advocate for them. Helping them changing their lifestyle by doing what? From dependency to independent, from following to leading, from hesitance to confidence, from emotional and planned response into research, planned based response. From learning, learning from others' experience including everyone, youth, women, minorities, and others, passing experience, knowledge, and leadership to generations to come, good governance as well. This is how to take them from their comfort zone. Then we convince them that they are not poor, they are rich, and their country is rich, and should be gradually fighting poverty, starting with small projects having quick impact results. Making social and voluntary work as a part of the social life and school curriculum. Focus on community and the country protection, not the fragmentation behind different ideologies, culture, history, religious differences. Not to be dependent on foreign aid. Definitely be careful with what we call World Bank and International Monetary Fund, IMF. Prioritizing capacity building programs, advocacy, research and development, and giving equal footage to charitable activities and emergency relief response. Not making religion, ideology, culture, language, and history divisive tools. This is how we start fighting poverty, by respecting the poor and making them partners and make and, and, and building their capacity, empowering them, and making them to own the project from A to Z. Proposed solution for poverty problems. Solution, first of all, having economic reform policy in the country, designing educational program according to the local market needs, encouraging citizens to improve their social lifestyle standard, Monitoring local markets, commodity prices, investing in social welfare program, particularly for the most needy, displaced, elderly, and others, utilizing national and natural resources, including human resources, benefiting from others' experience, raising consumer awareness to protect local economy, investing in education, vocational training, skills training, local small businesses, Building stronger civil side sector organization. And this is how we make a program. I'm just mentioning it very quickly. But if any one of you would like to have the presentation, we can send it to them by email. Let us give us some examples. Because you might be saying, okay, this is only the time of the Prophet وسلم, and the Khulafa and the others. And nowadays everybody is depressed. There is no money. There is no hope. You are actually... Disenfranchised. No, no, no. There's some organization working hard. I only mentioned a few. But this, this figure does not, do not represent total number of projects implemented by this organization. Those are the organizations who responded swiftly to me when I asked them to give me some of the projects that they have been doing 
to elevate the level of the poor people and take them out of poverty. First one was Qatar Charity in 2017. They implemented 115, 125 projects to benefit 18,000 families, 18,000 needs, which he took about nearly three to four, uh, 3,500 3, families. Penny Appeal UK, Qatar Charity in Qatar, Penny Appeal UK, 2017, they helped in this support scheme to empower the families. Hundreds, 1,815 families benefited from the project in Nigeria, Uganda, Sri Lanka, Palestine, and Rohingya. This is Penny Appeal, uh, Wakefield, UK. Umma Welfare Trust, UK as well. They supported 1,800 98, uh, 98 families in 2016 and 2017. So if you calculate this, just like random, you find that we have 3,600, 5,400, another, talk about nearly 7,000, 8,000 families, only, only from three organizations, and this is not the full. Those people are fighting poverty, so we should actually Respect them. Okay? More organization in Kuwait, direct aid, which is, uh, the good old days used to call it uh, Africa Muslim Agency, implemented in 2017 2,690 development projects in 29 countries to benefit 173,000 and 536 individuals. This is developmental project. And they implemented also what we call it Qarza Hasana or Sadaqa Jariya, 8,990 projects, loans, in three African countries, Sudan, Mauritania, and Tunisia. East, Sudan, East Africa, and North Africa, and West Africa. This is direct aid in Kuwait. Another Kuwaiti organization called the International Islamic Charitable Organization from Kuwait, IICO, Sadaqa Jaria and the Revolving Projects. They started with a capital fund of $7.15 million. In 10 years, this fund was revolving to go from a family to a family, actually, like, actually revolving fund. And the value of the revolving fund went up from $7.15 million into $47 million. Because from the repayment, they can give the loan to other family as well. With a percentage of 657%. 7 million become 47 million. Money goes around. In partnership with 362 organization in 32 countries to make 30, 39,000 small local projects to benefit up to 240,000 people in 10 years. So those five organizations are a good example for us, not only them, plenty more, plenty more. If we go back, we find that we'll be able to fight poverty will be able to end poverty, will be able to make poverty history. That was a, a campaign we were doing here in UK 20 years ago. Make poverty history. First of all, what we need to do to understand that each individual, each human being is very resourceful, is very rich in what the Creator has given him or her. So we have to discover their potential. We have to motivate them. We have to build their capacity. We have to let them to be confident in themselves. We have to be, let them to be able and confident to make that change and take the risk and make poverty history. No country on earth is poor. Whoever tells you that is a liar. No country on earth is on earth on poor. On poor. Look at the resources of your own country. Look at the wealth of the knowledge that your citizen in your country is having. 
I was in Azerbaijan, as I said last week, and I discovered high talented young people, male and female, and leading woman was extremely talented woman. You know what was the, 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 the only problem they have? They do not speak English. They do not speak French. They do not speak German. That's why nobody knows about them. Could those people be able to speak English? They'll be far more better than many in the UK and the many in Europe and the many in the Middle East and Africa and many in America. Because they have the talent, the ability, the determination, the integrity, and the credibility. But because we don't know the language, we don't look for them. And we look pity at them. I should speak the language. The least among them speak three languages. Turkish, Azari, and Russian. How many people who speak English can speak three languages? So discover the talent of the, of the people, especially the poor people. You find that they are very rich. Encourage them to build their society and make them partners and follow the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu who himself wanted to be amongst the miskeen. And this was his choice. As I said in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. See you again next week or the week after.